As you probably know, in Japan, it's a very big event each year. The poets and nature lovers go to the different parts to watch the various uh, blossoms of the cherry coming out. And one Japanese poet told me that really it was the very shortness was what its essence was in their scheme of things. Every single flower or plant has its own place in the chain. And he was also explaining to me how it was the symbol of the samurai warrior, because it breaks off at the height of its beauty and its perfection to die. It's a beautiful idea. So I'll have to write another poem, I think, in due course, moving on from the time. Now this next one is called Lotus in a Sea of Fire, and it was done at the height of the attempt to try and stop the young men in Australia having to go to Vietnam before they had the vote. Lotus in the Sea of Fire. Sweet whisperings of the man who hungered not sufficed. Nothing that we have is sufficient. Even Christ could not say, not the songs of Lao Tse, nor the grave of the unknown soldier asleep beneath the art to triumph with his everlasting flame. So, in a holy fervour of despair, I ransacked all the sacred books of wisdom, east and west, and still the war dragged on, compelling me to witness every day the lotus of Vietnam burning in a sea of fire. And what could be hoped for in the end, when all the protests and the shouting died away, our best was insufficient, though we tried. For all that the Pentagon cared, we could march until we died. There were no answers in this century of wars. We were flung into this conflict from the moment that we were born. All we could do was to see it through, expose the official lie, and go on bearing witness to the end, knowing someday the truth without. Sing the lotus in the sea of fire. We shall see some more of us more in the second half, perhaps. Jody will be flying in Glen, I think.